Hey, what's going on everybody? Sajun F1 here, and today I'm gonna explain to you why you should make the switch from WASD to ESDF. Like a lot of you know, I always use ESDF. I've been using it for a long time. I'm a big proponent of it. And since I come out with guides and things to help other people get better at the game, I decided I will kind of break down exactly why you should make the change to ESDF and spend a little more time on it. I have keybind videos and things like that. But I'm gonna spend a little more time just on the actual change from ESDF from WASD. Before we get started, I'm just going to briefly talk about why you use WASD. So the reason everybody uses WASD, it goes back to the early Quake days. A guy named Dennis Fong, who went by the gamer tag of Thresh, pretty much was just a head and shoulders over everybody else. Dominated competitions, won tournaments, even won a Ferrari. And this is back in the day when I think most people were actually using arrow keys and things like that. He was one of the early users of WASD. He wasn't the founder of it because a lot of people were kind of experimenting with what worked for them and whatever, but he was one of the other early adopters of WASD. From him, he said that people were using things like ZXC, other people were using ESDF. Uh, some, he said he, he saw somebody who did AZQE. But anyway, this guy was so good, and you know how it is in the game community. When somebody's really good, everybody starts adopting their keybinds and their sensitivity and whatever they do, because if you know if it works for them, maybe it'll work for you. So everybody just started using WASD, and it just kind of just kept going from there, where that became the standard of PC gaming. So if he happened to be using ESDF, which is literally the same thing, then that would have been the part thing that took over. So jumping into exactly why you should be changing. We're gonna start off with the probably the number one reason extra keys on the left side of your hand. And not just extra keys, but easy to reach keys. So you have your WASD right here, giving you a little visual. You know, we all know what that is. And then you can see your kind of pinky just kind of hovering out here on the side. What if you move over, it's literally the same thing. So if you just slide it over, it's the same movement. You see WASD right here, you got ESDF right there. The same stuff, you just slide it over. But what you do have access to now, is you have two hotkeys up here with that Q and a W, and as opposed to just the Q, you have the Q, the W. Your, your finger, your pinky finger, rests on a hotkey, rests on A, so you're using this for movement, but you have an extra one right there with your pinky. And then you also have, so right here, you only have like the Z, I mean, you only have like, uh, yeah, you only have this movement right here, right? Which we'll is slide down. But if you move over to SDF, you have two keys down here. You have the Z and the X. It's not like you're losing the Z because you're still there. But the fact that when you move your hand over, your, your pinky slides down, you, you still have all these now. As opposed to if you're a WASD, you only have these three. But then you get four if you go down right here. Next big reason is it is a low learning curve. So to go to WASD, let's give you this for instance. You're on WASD. Let's say you have something keybound on E. It's just this movement right here. It's just moving up, right? That's how you that's how you press it. Now, if you're on ESDF and you switch to the ESDF and you move over, whatever you had on E before, you just move it to R. And it's the exact same movement. If you were here and you had something on Q, so your A, your A your, uh, went up to, to Q, right? If you slide over, now you just put that on W. It's the exact same movement. So the learning curve is literally the same thing that you have on WASD, but now by moving it over, you, get, you have even more access to new things that you press. And it's not like you're losing your tab, caps, and shift, or whatever. That's all easy to hit. You just hit, you just slide your pinky over, boom, right there, done deal. Another reason is for us typers, people who actually know how to type, this is the home key. This is what your hands, on a keyboard, this is where your hands are supposed to be. It's supposed to be from ASDF. This is where you're supposed to type. And then your right hand goes from J, K, L, semicolon. So if you know how to type, this is just natural movements and this is the where it's supposed to be. And then one of the last reasons, it's so easy to find your home keys because there is, there's little notches right here. You see this on J, on uh, J and F because your right hand's supposed to start here and then your uh, left hand's supposed to start here. But you, you can feel that notch, and even if you're not looking, you can always find your way back to ESDF because this is where your hands are supposed to rest because you have little notches right here. So it's always e it's so easy just to get back to your little home base there. Well, there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. Hopefully that made sense to you. You understand why I use ESDF and anybody else who's out there using ESDF and why I really think you should make the change that will help you to have easy to reach key binds and access things that you probably couldn't have do before and just make it to speed up your gameplay. That being said, I do have supporter creator. It is just my name, Saljun F1. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you think about it in the description below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You all have a good one.